This video is sponsored by Decal Works, offering 10% off all graphics to retail customers. Use the promo code RX10 at decalmx.com to receive 10% off your graphics. Hey everybody, I'm Chris Kiefer. Welcome to racerxonline.com and another garage build. Before we start with this 2023.5 Works Edition Honda, just want to point out, if you guys are out in the shop or the garage after work and you're working on your dream builds, why don't you send me those photos and tell me what you guys are building over on chris at keferinktesting.com. And maybe if you guys are out in the Southern California area, could be featured here right now on racerxonline.com garage build series. So please send me them. I know this garage build series is dedicated to you guys building your dream machines and maybe just a little bit different than the normal bike that we see. We test 2024 bikes are coming up. So if you guys are building something out in the shop, hit me up, send me the photos, and maybe you'll be featured right here. So today we're gonna do a 2023.5 Honda CRF 450R Works Edition. Eddie Larratt is a HVAC salesman, and he loves a Honda. He comes from a Kawasaki background, but I've seen him ride a Honda. I kind of influenced him to go this direction because it helps him corner better. He's a vet B rider, and to me, Honda does a great job at allowing vet guys that don't corner well to help them achieve what they want in racing is to get through the corners in a better manner. But the tricky part is with the Honda, the chassis is a finicky you know what. So we worked on the chassis here, put some KYB suspension on, along with some other trinkets we'll talk about. But first things first, we're going to head out here at Glen Helen Raceway today and go ride the thing. And we'll come back with Eddie and explain everything we did to this Honda. Wrapped up here at Glen Helen Raceway today. Got Eddie Larratt. This is his build. He told me, Chris, I want a works edition. I want to race Mammoth. The R was maybe a little bit too herky jerky for you. So you wanted a works edition, but I want KYB suspension. That was the main thing for you. So here we are. This is what you did. Every day he's out in the shop building this thing, creating something for himself. So Give us the reasons why you did what you did and the parts that you used here. Yeah, so the R, uh, you know, the R we rode for a while. I rode it for a while with the Showa stuff. And I don't want to say that I've never been a huge fan of Showa stuff, but Showa stuff leans to be a little more uh, aggressive initially, a little more harsh. So more performance, maybe less comfort. Correct, yeah. And maybe that's why you see it on most of the high-end factory bikes. They all seem to go with the Showa just because it's a more, uh, you know, performance-based stuff. So KYB in the past, you know, Chris has talked about the KYB initial stuff could be a little plusher, a little more forgiving, a little easier to get a hold of for a vet-style rider. So I said, uh, hey, let's try, you know, and see if we can track down and see if the guys at Technical Touch uh, Rick and them would uh, help us out with a set of KYB kit suspension. So um, easy enough, one little phone call and there it was. You know, he, he had ordered the stuff in for us. So when the suspension first came, it comes valved by Belgium with their specs. So they have specs that you tell them your weight, your ability, and they valve it for you when it comes. Um, we had some conversation about that prior. I was rather excited, you know, because it's a different thought process I'm sure over there at the KYB factory that I'm like wow this is this is gonna be cool yeah. not only do I have very very good top-notch suspension I'm right. also got the best of the best valving it for me but uh but yeah but but <laughs> but um as we got it here we you know we learned that um I learned Chris already knew but he kind of kept it under wraps to see where I was at the tracks are a lot different over there you know that they're, they're they're nothing like what we ride in California, let alone like going east uh, with the deeper tracks. So yeah, we found it was a tad bit too soft, um, which kept the bike a little too deep in the stroke, which gave it a really harsh, chattery feel. Um, 
it was good when you could get up to a decent, like a quick, quick pace. But, uh, you know, early in the motos, it was okay. Like I could manage it. But then as I started to fall off, it became very violent and aggressive. Yeah, so for me, like when you have, in Europe, it's all small chatter, hard pack, unless you're riding Lomo and all these other tracks. But usually the, the consensus of settings in Europe is just basically a softer, less low speed type of feel. So for Eddie, he's 220 pounds, lots of pitching. So we sent it over to shock therapy and then they massage it from there. Yeah, so we, we sent it to shock therapy. Um, I've been working with Steve for a few years on multiple bikes. Um, he kind of knows what I like. Uh, he actually got it pretty much right where it needed to be from the get-go. There was one, a uh, few minor changes that we wanted to do to it. So, uh, you know, that, that was something that we were kind of working on. But uh, for the most part, I mean, uh, it, you know, in the tracks here in Southern California, it's, it's been good. It's, it's, a, it's a good addition to a motorcycle that's already pretty good off the showroom, you so know? So here's the question that everybody's gonna wanna ask. It's gonna yeah. be in the comment section. I already know it. <laughs> is the price tag for the KYB that much better than if I can get my show of stuff valved? I, if I bought this motorcycle, I would buy the KYB suspension. Mm -hmm. I'm you not- you planning on keeping it for a while. Yeah, I'm not saying that the show of stuff can't be just as good. I'm not going to tell you that because there's people, like you said, are going to chew us up in the comment section saying, oh, my show stuff works great. Yeah. So it's all rider preference. For me, I, the, the initial part of the stroke entering into the chop is my most critical part of suspension. It can be a touch on the soft side, but I don't get to ride that much. So I deal I, with a lot of arm pump. I need something that has that initial 20% that's plush and it's not beating up my arms. Yep. So the KYB stuff, check that box for me. So if I had to, if I bought this motorcycle, I would buy the KYB kit stuff. And it's, I've done comparisons from Showa to KYB on a Honda before, and there's just a different character when you have a KYB setting on your Honda. It takes a little edginess off of the Honda chassis. The Showa stuff to me feels a slightly more rigid feel. Um, Slap down landings are better on Showa, but light bump, small bump stuff that we have here at Glen Helen, the KYB stuff just seems to build a little bit more comfort within this stiff nature chassis feel. And this is the reasons why we, we tried to build this garage build, I would assume, just to get more comfort. Yep. The Honda has a great engine, it corners well, but straight line, it's a little bit too much for older guys, I would assume. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of harshness um, when you're on the edges of your tires, it does seem to deflect a little bit. So with the KYB, it does calm that down. Um, not to mention that you also have, you can go to a different offset. We chose a 22, but you can go to 23.5 or a 24 millimeter offset. Older X-Trig 24s will work, but you have to run the older style front fender. I think that's one of the reasons why we got confused at sometimes. Yep. But uh, just the PHDS mounts with the X-Trig does help with some dampening feel. I'm sure you can concur. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, I mean, the PDHS bar mount is one of the main reasons. PHDS, it's tough. PHDS <laughs> is one of the main reasons why I went with it, just because of the vibration cushioners. Yes. It takes a lot off of the handlebar, so, um, plus it just completes the build, you know? I mean, it makes it look beautiful. What else you give to this thing? So, yeah, this thing's, uh, you know, obviously this, this was a WE, so there's not, we, we, I didn't have to go crazy with this bike because it's already has the motor massaging. We did go with Twisted Development with a Vortex ECU map a uh, little closer to what our likings are. Um, so again, it's a linear, smooth feel, you know, like we don't have really deep, deep rutted tracks out here. So I always shoot, again, to alleviate some of the pressure on my arms. I always try to smooth the bottom out. So Jamie worked with me on some mapping that kind of, you know, th these things are fire breathers to begin with. So just to kind of, tame it out tame it down a little bit and uh, so we achieved that with the vortex um, obviously it, it we already comes with this beautiful Yoshimura system uh, some of our always contributors no matter who we, we call these guys all the time doesn't matter what we're building they're always in works connection um, got all the reservoir caps the the um, elite chain blocks the uh, leading start device in the industry, in my opinion. Yeah, the Pro Launch is easy to use, never breaks. Yeah, it's simple. I mean, and it's, it is it is effortless. And, uh, and Eddie's a big crossbar guy. 
I tried him to get him away from crossbars, but for whatever reason, he he's. I need a crossbar. I guess visually, you need that. Yeah, it's just. I mean, it's something we've. I've always had. Yeah. I, I've tried the. Um, you know the, the like the Evo bars and, and even the Twin Wall uh, Fat Bar. I don't have a problem with it. I can ride with it. It's just. I, I've always had a crossbar, so it's just something that I've always. I, I always put on my bike. So. Um, these are Fusion Race Team Ben, unlocked. So uh, a little more, again, a little more comfort. Third waffle, um, black pro taper grip. I've, uh, I've, believe it or not, it's a little bit fatter of a grip. I got a bigger hand than what a normal like Renthal or thinner style, but it, it, it works for me. It's more comfortable in my hands. It takes up more of the palm of my hand, so I'm not over gripping too much. So that that um, I've been on these for a while now, the last few builds, and uh, really happy with that. Uh, Pro pegs, I I wasn't a fan of the Honda stock peg. Okay. Yeah, I, I wasn't uh, really dull. Well, I mean, if it's titanium, Eddie's in. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. It's titanium. It's it's a better platform. Pro pegs, you can get that at Works Connection as well. Yes, that's so where I got those from. I have that on my personal bikes, but I like to run the open cleat. They give you two designs. They have a, a bar in the middle, or you can run an open cleat design. I prefer the open cleat design. Obviously, Moto Hose hooked it up with some hoses. Yeah, Moto Hose came through with the blue hose kit, silicone blue, blue hose kit. Um, Light Speed came through with a carbon fiber skid plate, rear chain block, and rear caliper guard, which all my personal bikes have that uh, Light Speed stuff on it. You know, I mean, I, I think Light Speed carbon parts just make a motorcycle look second to none. The uh, race style glide plates have a lot more protection up the side of the cases. So you don't get nothing underneath there, you know, punching a hole in any of the cases. And then uh, one that I was really, really excited with was um, the guys at Race Tech Titanium. Oh, Back here to we the go. Titanium. titanium, shocking. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Race Tech Titanium. They make all the fasteners, uh, pretty much everything. You could build a whole bike in Race Tech Titanium. Um, the stuff is can be very pricey. Yeah. You know, especially when you start getting to the bigger linkages and, and axles and stuff. So of course we didn't, you know, we. That will change the handling characteristics of a motorcycle. So if you're going to put titanium in your bike, be very cautious on where you place these bolts because they will give the chassis, if you start doing all the engine mounts mm -hmm. and all the connection points, swing arm pivots, linkages, axles, pinch will, bolts, yeah, we'll get more you can get the bike more rigid. And as we talked about earlier, the Honda's already a little on the rigid side to begin with. So. I basically on this bike did all my handlebar controls, all my body fasteners, some brake stuff. Um, they make a phenomenal axle nut, really nice looking. Uh, sprocket bolts and stuff. Just, I wanted to test their durability of their stuff. So I told them, send me some of the stuff that's in a high stress area. And uh, yeah, no problems whatsoever with that stuff. So um, huge props to those guys over at Race Tech Titanium. And then of course, uh, you know, I think pretty much our final one is, you know, Jeremy and Twinner. Yeah. I can't thank that guy enough. I mean, it's when we ride these bikes week in and week out, two, three times a week, we're going through filters and Jeremy, we're, nice. we're good. It's nice to have pre-oiled filters and not to do them. So, and of course, to round out the look, Polysport has some really nice looking, I want to call it gunmetal gray, almost. It's like. kind of, yeah. Yeah, they ha they actually have a specific name for it and I can't really pronounce it, so I'm not even gonna try. So we'll call it, call it gray and then yep. decal wraps this thing up with the cool graphics that is on here. So for me, it's a, an attractive Honda, it's a different looking Honda. And for me, it's a less rigid Honda. That's the most important piece. Granted, I don't know how much you guys want to spend $7,000 on suspension, yeah. but uh, there is a lot of that money within the suspension. Yeah, so clamp suspension, also the linkage factory connection if you want to have a little bit more compliance coming out of the corners that's one thing this thing has it's like it feels stiff underneath you so uh the linkage system that factory connection has i helped them develop some of that a couple years ago and it really does help compliance on the motorcycle on throttle yeah that that honestly i i rode this bike both ways this chassis both ways with the linkage and without and I'm going to be honest with you, on multiple surfaces, chatter and stuff, that's a must for me. I, I rode it on a stock linkage, and then we, we, there's some modifications you do that Factory Connection tells you to do, but it's a shorter link arm, different geometry through the knuckle, so you have to put a two millimeter spacer in your shock to offset, otherwise you get a bike that's real stink bug. But man, that, that is huge to, to help this, the rear end stability of this chassis to keep, you know, come out of exiting through the chop to keep the bike going straight, it's 
I felt that was a huge difference, to believe it or not. So if you're a Honda owner, you guys know what we're talking about. You want a little bit more comfort, a little less rigidity. There's a lot of things you can do right here with this bike that we performed right now. So uh, if you have any questions, Chris at KeeperInkTesting.com or Eddie actually has an email, Eddie, E-D-D-I-E, -D -D -E, at KeeperInkTesting.com. He's happy to help answer your questions about the Honda. And uh, thank you for uh, watching this Garage Build. We'll be back next month with another one. And if you uh, want to subscribe to Racer X, 12 issues, $30. Go ahead and do that and get some more information through the print side of the magazine. And we'll be back next month. See ya.